air pressure and winds. This again is one of the more boring ones, but I apologize for that. However, at the end of it, I'm going to show a video and you'll see how much you've actually learned. Okay, so before I can get into the details of this stuff, you need to know the definitions. Wind is defined as the result of horizontal differences in atmospheric pressure. So horizontal differences, okay, I get that. In atmospheric pressure, wait, I thought this whole chapter was atmospheric pressure, so what does that mean? Okay, here we go. Atmospheric pressure, sometimes called air pressure, which is basically what I'm going to call it, air pressure, because um, I'm lazy and I don't want to say atmospheric. Anyways, it is the force exerted against a surface by continuous collisions of gas molecules. So basically the pressure of the air pushing down. That's air pressure. At sea level, your air pressure is one kilogram per square centimeter. One kilogram per square centimeter. Okay, that's how everyone in the world does it, except us. We say it's 14.7 pounds per square inch. So one kilometer per square centimeter, or 14.7 pounds per square inch. Again, you can see why people like metric a little bit better, because 1 versus 14.7. Okay, how is air pressure measured? Well, in millibars. Okay, and they've got all these crazy things about what a millibar is compared to a newton. Unless you really know your physics, don't worry about that. Um, but basically, it's measured in millibars. We don't usually say what was it, Kilo, kilogram per centimeter squared or pounds per inch squared, okay? We usually say it's millibars. So at sea level, the pressure is 1,013.25 millibars. So essentially 1,013 is sea level. Now how do we get these millibars? Well, barometers. And you can see a picture of a barometer right here, okay? You have a little pool of mercury, you have a tube stuck into the pool of mercury, the air pressure is pushing down on the mercury, which is making it rise in the tube. So the harder it pushes down, the higher this will rise. High pressure, high mercury level, right? Pushing down, go up. If it's not pushing down as much, you'll have a low mercury level. Okay, now here's the thing. High pressure and low pressure. Those are the main ones we're going to talk about. Now there's also rising pressure and falling pressure. Okay, but high pressure means that you have clear skies and nice weather. So you want a high pressure system if you're going to the beach. Right? If you have to study all day and you don't want to be tempted to go outside and play, then you really don't want a high pressure. Right? You want a low pressure. If you have to study and stay inside all day and you can't go outside, you want a low pressure system to pass over you because that means rain and clouds and ick. So high pressure, let's go outside, go to the beach, do whatever. Low pressure, ugh, let's just stay inside and have a game night. Right. High pressure versus low pressure. Now here's the thing, everyone, <laughs> everyone, and that's true too, everything wants to go from high pressure to low pressure. Think about it yourself. Okay, I have this lovely example of when you open a can of pop, it's just like, psh, right? that's it going from the high pressure to the low pressure. Now, you yourself want to go from high pressure to low pressure unless you like thrive off of stress or something. But if I were to say, okay, you have a quiz right now, unless you while you're watching a video. So unless you turn off your computer right now, I'm giving everyone a quiz. What are you going to do? Turn off your computer, right? Because <laughs> you don't want to take the quiz. That's high pressure. At versus low pressure, turn off your computer and walk away. Right? Works a lot better in the classroom when I say go out the door, but you know, online has its issues. All right. So, wanted to talk about this picture here. 
you're like, wow, this is not really a picture. A picture usually has diagrams and this is kind of just words, right? Mm -hmm, I know. Millibars. Right, so what is sea level? 1,013, so right about here. Look at that average sea level, right? So right about here. High pressure system usually means nice, right? So strong high pressure system, it's called an anticyclone. We'll get to that. Um, highest recorded sea level pressure in the US. It was here, a high level pressure. It was in Montana. I would argue that sea level is probably not an ideal statement for that. But anyway, another one in Siberia up here. Now, well, this is nice weather. So basically nothing's been reported up here because it's nice. No one really cares. But when it's not nice, you want to turn on the weather and find that out, right? Strong low pressure system, mid-latitude cyclones. We're going to get into those. I think that's chapter eight or nine. I can't remember, but we'll get into that. But then what's down here? Oh, Hurricane Katrina. Right, around 900, 902. Hurricane Wilma, right, same year as Katrina. Lowest pressure recorded in the Atlantic for an Atlantic hurricane. Lowest recorded sea level pressure here, typhoon tip. So when they're talking about hurricanes, they're talking in this category here. Okay, so bad weather, really bad weather, really bad weather, right? Nice weather, nice weather, nice weather. High pressure, nice weather, low pressure, bad weather. Um, just because I'm curious and we're going to date this just a little bit. I get to see my screen. Um, There is quite an active Atlantic right now. Let's see, we have, oh, pointing to my screen like you can see it. We have a disturbance. We have, oh good, another disturbance. And we have two storms, Paulette and Renee. And so if you look, minimum pressure, 996 for Paulette. Minimum pressure, 1003 for Renee. Okay, let's go back to that PowerPoint. 1,003, 996. So these are tropical storm pressures that we're dealing with right now. Again, this may be 10 years old for you, but that's what we were dealing with then. 